Now there are two figures here, they're very close together. 97% and 100%. They're just three numbers apart. The Dental Association since 1925, when Coolidge came out with the figure, same figures used today, that 97% of the root canals are successful. Our figures are not 97%, they're 100%. 100% of the samples we have run are contaminated with very bad pathogenic, which means disease-producing, bacteria. Uh, we're talking over 350 samples. So 350 out of 350 suggests 351 is going to be contaminated too. And we do have 300,000 data points of chemistry information over the last several decades showing that when the mercury and the root canals and something called cavitations are cleaned up and you balance the chemistry, the body can recover from a lot of these incurable diseases. It was interesting to note, I call this a trigger, <clears throat> there was a trigger event that happened in 1976 because multiple sclerosis was reasonably stable. Uh, 8,800 plus or minus 100 or two cases a year through 1970, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then in 1976, it went from 8,800 to 123,000 new cases a year. And you saw that on the front page of the paper, didn't you? Hmm. Nobody else did either. No. I just found that out recently, and multiple sclerosis is something that we have dealt with for a long, long time, since the 1960s. Hmm. But in 1976, what happened? The Dental Association, irritated with the fact that I was saying that mercury was poisonous, one of their quotations was, yes, Mercury is the most and most poisonous toxic element on the planet. However, get this, in the mouth its toxic properties are rendered harmless. <laughs> now this came out when I was taking my postdoc masters and I presented this to the professors. And you talk about the expressions. One of the professors said, uh, they must have discovered alchemy. But people believe that sort of thing, mm -hmm. that you take the most toxic element in the world and put it in the mouth, and now it is safe. One of the things I've wanted to do is to manufacture a vitamin pill that has the amount of mercury in it that comes out of a filling in one day, submit that to the FDA and see if they'll pass it. <laughs> I don't think they would do <laughs> that. Not. But it's interesting, you know these new light bulbs, these corkscrew mm -hmm. things that are full of mercury? If you break one of those, somebody sent me the paper the other day of all the things you have to do. First you call mm -hmm. Obama, that, no that was on something else. Uh, anyway, there are a lot of things that you have mm -hmm. to do. And yet there are 500,000 times more mercury than that in one filling, and not to worry. What's going on here? Protection, protection from liability. Yeah. Now, in 19, looking at this chart, you can see that MS went up tremendously. So did Lou Gehrig's disease, which when I was a kid, Lou Gehrig was a ball player. And my cousin, Miller Huggins, was manager of Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth. So I thought there was only one baseball team in the world, <laughs> not the New York Yankees. And now I find he's not a ball player anymore. He's a disease. Twenty years ago, I heard about it maybe once every six months. Now we get calls on it maybe two or three times every day. I know what the cause is. We are getting some success. And since it's incurable, hey, 1% is better than zero. Well, we're doing better than 1%. But the important thing is it doesn't have to happen. You don't have to have multiple sclerosis. It came out 
in around 1832 in Paris, France. And the first commercially prepared amalgams were placed, take a guess. At the same time. Same time, same place, 1832 in Paris, France. Is there a relationship? Uh, leukemia kind of came in at the same time. Is there a relationship? No, these things are coincidental. Well, there are hundreds of coincidences of people who are in perfectly good health. They get a root canal placed, they get a bunch of amalgams placed, their health goes down the tubes.